So this, I think, rather charming scene is of an early church somewhere in the north of England. In real time, it took me about 35 minutes to draw, which is still, to my thinking, uh, a reasonably quick sketch, but without it being a really quick drawing. So there's no real time pressure in drawing it, except for the fact that I am keeping a rather steady, somewhat faster pace and happy to compromise some details just with overall effect. So this tower, this square tower, is obviously the focus of our scene, both because of what it is, but also because of the space that there is around it so that it stands out completely. And at this point, it's worth spending extra time to get the perspective angles correct and to get the proportions as correct as we can. So that's what I'm trying to do. I do plan to give some indication of stonework later, which means I do need to have a sense of how the perspective angles flatten as the coursings between the stone come down the tower towards eye level. So now I've got these two windows to put in, two arched, or I think they're lance, are they lancet windows? Anyway, pointy arched windows. And the challenge is not to make them too large, which can easily happen when we're trying to draw a relatively large amount of detail with a pen that's probably just a bit too large for that much detail in the size we want to draw it. So having put those in, working out where I'm going to go now. So I'll do this other window that's down at the base, which I imagine is behind the altar, inside the church. And now I'm really just sort of pondering where to go. There's nothing super obvious, but if I establish a bit more of the building, then I can help position the a bush in front and some of the surrounding things. And I notice that there are three windows that we can just see part of, and I pounce on those to help me work out how far horizontally to take this part of the church, the um, nave, I imagine this is. I do those. And now I've established pretty much the, the, the length off to the right. So now I can more confidently do this uh, rather large bush after I've put this headstone in. which is quite a nice touch to have in the foreground. It's the sort of thing where if it wasn't there, we might want to have made it up. And there's clearly some sort of uh, memorial or probably more a burial plot on the other side of this, this large shrubby bush. And there's some wrought iron, a low wrought iron barrier around that. So I'm not trying to exactly represent what's there, but I am trying to give the effect of generally the sort of pattern that is there. And then in the distance, there's some more headstones. And then there are these trees. So I thought I might as well put them in because there's not too much work involved with those. Now, what I do is I establish the trunks and then I work out where the tips of the branches are going to go and come back down towards the trunk. put on the, if you like, the decorative capping, the little crown of the square tower. And I'm a bit annoyed because um, this is where, I mean, I, I was actually feeling a bit tired when I drew this. I remember thinking, I need to just check the size, the scale of these little pointy bits. And I just didn't. I just thought, oh, I just can't be bothered turning my head. And this is the price we pay when we can't be bothered to turn our head and look at the reference and we just go with thinking, oh, I know. Yeah, look, I, I know what they are. I don't need to check it again. And they're just too large, which if we don't see the reference is fine. But comparing the drawing and the reference, the reference somehow looks more architecturally appropriate than having these extended uh, spikes on the corners. And so now I think I may as well put some of the effect of the, the stonework 
on the tower because that's quite important for visually the overall effect and it will help me work out what I need to do with the rest of the line effects I'm going to do. I, I do a bit of a bodge of that clock and I finish up to get it looking okay, having to give it a very heavy outline that almost makes it look more like a, a pierced window. But it does position it better and it does make it a bit rounder. So I think it's a better solution than having uh, a lopsided clock that's perhaps a truer representation of the clock on the tower. And then just doing some stonework on this small buttress that comes off the corner of each tower but this is actually the only one we can see side on because the next one around faces us directly and then I have these other trees to do as well. So I do those and although I'm not aware of it this is not the last of my contact with these trees. I come back to them to cover up something later on in the in the drawing. It's not that we don't make mistakes when we draw and when we draw directly in pen of course we can't erase them but there so often is a reasonably good opportunity provided to at least overcome some of the impact of the mistakes if not hide them completely. So now I'm doing the porch way. Now just watch what happens here speaking to mistakes. I, I get the perspective really wrong on this little gabled entrance way. It looks even more wrong when I put the doorway in. It's just all skew if. I don't know if that's a word that the rest of the world uses but it's all, all very skew if and I start to look at it and think oh my goodness that's terrible. And so I realized what I can do is I can shift the top towards the left and that then has the effect of centering that arch better. And while again it's not quite looking the same as in the drawing, it looks from a perspective point of view much more accurately drawn. And then there's a glimpse of a window that's just at the front of the church and I just do a few lines to start to represent the foliage which is going to be here. I don't know how dark I'm going to hatch that, that tree on the extreme right. Um, it would be good to make it really nice and dark, but that will take forever with a 0.3 millimeter pen, which is the one I'm using. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to compromise the darkness that I use there, but I do establish the top of the tree and reference the tower with that and I do also work out where my right hand edge of my drawing is going to be and I come back to this this center bush which which is sort of an unusual composition to have this rather ordinary large shrub right in the middle but I quite like the way the church appears behind it peeking out on all sides and this is this is a pathway leading to the church so this is actually a view that you get as you approach it so there's a fair bit of, of hatching and then cross hatching that takes place with this bush it really did take me um, I feel like as long as the rest of the drawing together almost it was just back and forth, back and forth. And at first I was just going to do the hatching for the shadows and the shaded areas because the the ends of the bush that have some sort of, uh, maybe they're berries or some sort of a flower or maybe flowers that are going to seed. Um, originally I was going to leave those areas white on the bush, but I decided just also to do a lighter hatching over the entire bush to, give it a stronger sense of separation from the church behind it. I didn't want to start hatching the church heavily, so I decided to do the opposite and make this large bush a lot darker. So 
because I'm now hatching the lighter areas, I'm having to make the darker areas that I've hatched darker still to keep the relative values the same, or at least something in the right direction, if not the same. Of course, you'll find this reference photo on my channel community page, and if you'd like to have a go drawing this, then you'll find it there. You can, you can either just draw it from the screen, or you can uh, screenshot and print off a hard copy. So now I've got really the last substantial thing to do, I'm thinking, and that's this large tree on the right. And by this stage, I'm really wanting to be finished. I need to go and get dinner organized. And then I make one of those mistakes that's so easy to make towards the end of a drawing. I, as I'm hatching over everything and just looking at the overall values, and I look again at the tower and I'm thinking, oh, that buttress is in shade and it's a darker shade than the rest of the stonework. And so I think, I'll just, I'll just hatch that, um, that shadow onto it, which I'm just about to do. And well, I thought I was just about to do it. Here I go. However, what I haven't noticed is that my tower is a little bit too wide at the top for the base. And now that I've hatched to the left of that corner line, it's much more obvious. And now the, the tower looks swollen at the top and too skinny at the back. So my, my solution to this dilemma is to put more branches to, so, I, so I can bring the left side of the tower tighter against the tower so that it looks thinner at the top. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Look, these things happen to all of us. They're part of the adventure of drawing. I hope you have a go with this. You'll find it on my community page. So why not give this charming scene a go drawing? But look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.